Welcome, everybody. Glad to have you here for our sermon recap. Matt's back this week. There he is. I know right you guys are so things. excited to see Yay. Matt. is back. He's Thanks. got so many great things to share with you today. They're just thoughts. Okay, just, go ahead. I'm taking those thoughts captive, though. So Go ahead. <laughs> share something with us. Lay it on us, big guy. I got nothing. <laughs> There's the honest truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, yep. Yeah. Well, we'll see y'all next time. <laughs> Oh, well, thanks for joining us this week. Uh, it's uh, We had a great weekend. Uh, wrapped up our series, Followed. And uh, really good job there. Great job, sir. Uh, taking us through the, the three words and kind of helped give a good, good description of what it means to follow after Jesus. And week one, we had listen. Then we had obey. And this week, we had abide. And uh, you really, uh, you really kind of threw out there for us that abiding is not one more thing to throw onto the to-do list. It wasn't one more action step for us to necessarily take that's going to take up a large chunk of your schedule, but it was more of a mindset. Um, talk to us a little bit about kind of where that, that whole idea came from, because i got to be honest with you, the abiding in Christ being a mindset, that's the, that's the first time I've really thought about it that way. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you hear things, you know, like pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you do that when you've got children? You know, how do you do that when yeah. you've got? How do you do that when you've got a job? You know, I mentioned in one of the sermons when I was a kid, this uh, guy came and preached at our church. I was a little kid, and he talked about how he prayed for five hours a day. And I just remember as a kid thinking, "Wow, he's he's kind of right up there next to Jesus." But I don't know that I can ever do that. Who can right. Who can actually sure. do that yeah. with with a job and with a life? You know. Um, and there's nothing wrong with praying for a long time, and that was a great man and a lot of honor to him. But I was thinking in terms of young families, when we talk about time with God and, and all mm -hmm. that, you imagine mom and dad with little kids. They're just hanging on for the ride a lot of times with their schedules, you know, school and all that. And I thought, you know, what? how did they abide in Christ? Uh, because... If it's an activity, if it's something else they've got to plug into their calendar, they're going to have a hard time doing that. Right. And there's obviously um, a need to to make space in our calendar for God, mm -hmm. you know, with our families. I think it's true that sometimes we get busy with a lot of things that are not eternal, you know, and we get over busy with stuff that really does not impact our children. Right. You know? um, and I, I love sports and love sure. having kids involved in sports and activities, but, uh, and, and maybe I'm going off in a direction that doesn't <laughs> should, but I, I never, I never tried to raise, uh, you know, professional ball players of any sort. You right. know, I, I want to raise, uh, and did raise a godly young man and young woman, you know, and, uh, that was the goal. So there needs to be some time as a family right. when they do spend some time with God together outside of church, but, the whole idea of abiding, how do we do that? I find that I that I abide in Christ or not, usually in my head. It's usually up here. Yeah. You know, it's my heart is always, you know, with Jesus, He's with me, my heart, He has my heart. But the place I lose that abiding is in my brain a lot of times, just my thought processes. It's good. Yeah, it is. Yeah, That's I'll why say I it's, preached it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I'll okay. say as one of those as one of those dads with the kids and the schedule and school and pick up and get them to sleep and you know which I love most of those things. Um, <laughs> this week was kind of like a relief, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word, but it was like okay, I'm not failing completely at this idea of abiding in Christ. It almost to me, and I don't know that you necessarily phrase it this way, but it, to me it communicated, it's, it's really being more aware of Jesus and the way that he would respond in a situation and that he's called me to be that response. Am I off target on what you were saying or is that kind of where? Uh, no, I think that's what I'm trying to say. I, I think some of us have kind of all or nothing personalities. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people like that. It's either all or nothing, you know. There are like the monks, you know, who go to a monastery and they just spend their whole time in silence and prayer and meditation, you know, and then they come out and they, they're silent and, I mean, very ordered. And uh, very few people today in our culture are going to be a monk. And I'm not, I'm pretty sure that's not what God's called us to be sitting around this table anyway. I'm right. not saying anything wrong with the ones who are doing that, but 
at some point you got to get out and have a life if you're going to take you that inner life into the outer world you right. know so you got to get out there so i don't think it's an all or nothing it's not being a monk shut up in your house nose in your bible on your knees by your bed 24 7. i just think it's making room for the lord in your daily life and a lot of the a lot of our lives is in our head you know yeah. I was on a drive yesterday. I spent yesterday about six hours in my car going to an event and coming back. And uh, I just had, it felt like a million conversations with myself there and back. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. a million things went through my mind. You've got a whole world in here that's going on. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, that's the place we have to strive to let Jesus into, in here. I can have him in my heart, but then my head is in a whole other direction. You know, I may be thinking about what somebody did to me or yeah. how I'm going to get everything done or whatever, you know. And I can fill my mind with a hundred things that just aren't really Jesus. You made the comment in, in the message as well um, that I thought was really powerful was when we, when, we give, when we give our lives to Christ, He has our heart. But then this, there's this battlefield in our mind, in our mind, where the enemy really tries to take root and goes goes to work in our mind. I thought that was so uh, so powerful to say um, that hey, even even as a follower of Christ, there's this there's this real battlefield going on with your thoughts, with your mind, where you focus your attention at. Um, and man, that really began to put things in perspective for me. That's where the fight really is. Yeah. Satan can't steal your heart away. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus is there and. Uh, Satan's not going to be able to steal that, but boy, he can distract your mind. Yeah. He really can. And then you miss things. And that's where, you know, we got into the whole thing and the whole struggle we have from how we view the world. Um, I can view the world with how things affect me. Mm -hmm. I can do that. And I do that a lot. Uh, I said in the message, I can be very self-centered, and I think most of us deal with that. I can view everything that happened as how this affects me, you know. Or I can make the decision in every circumstance of life to say, God, what are you up to here? Right. What are you doing? And when I ask the wrong questions, and, and I'm not consciously asking these questions. It's, right. you know, it's just there. It's a paradigm, if you will. And, and God's been working in my heart to kind of shift that whole paradigm to wherever I'm at, just getting in touch with what He's doing in the room. No, it's like it's almost rewiring your brain. Like you have to form new habits of... When the, when the questions that just pop in your head come up going, no, what is God doing? Like, that's a hard, it makes a lot of sense when you say it, but for me, I'm going, how do I really make myself do that? Does that make sense? I haven't, I haven't landed on a great answer for myself yet. <laughs> well, I think we have this crisis experience of salvation when our hearts are changed by Jesus Christ. Then I think we have this process that begins and continues of, of what Paul called the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. Paul said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what's the good and acceptable, perfect will of God. So he's saying, if you want to live a life that demonstrates God, that demonstrates Jesus, he said that in so many words, then let God transform your mind. Mm -hmm. and, he, and it's like he says, be ye transformed. I, I hadn't looked at the Greek to see, but it feels like be ye transformed is a process by which I'm allowing someone to change my mind. Yeah. You know, I'm not doing it, I'm allowing someone. And I think that's a daily relationship with Jesus, that he's changing our minds. It's kind of like in the, uh, the passage yesterday, let this mind be in you. Right. You know, have the same attitude of Christ. Let this happen. And it comes from Jesus. One of the, uh, I think I probably heard more comments uh, coming out of yesterday's message around, <laughs> around the phrasing that I don't know that was intentional to say, but the abiding in Andy. <laughs> Said I can, uh, <laughs> oftentimes I can find myself abiding in Andy. And I thought that that was just a great visual and a great illustration there to really be able to explain what we're talking about here. About, you know, I can abide in my own thoughts, I can abide in my own ways, um, but that is not going to get me to where I want to be. That's not following Christ when I abide in myself and I abide in my own thoughts, but it really is coming back to abiding in Christ. I, I just heard more people coming out saying, I get it, I get it, that makes sense. So yeah. 
that's it. When I do stupid things, when I have bad attitudes with people, when I when I sin, yeah. I'm abiding in Andy. That's me. That's my flesh. That's the old man. And the Bible says something about putting off the old man. Mm -hmm. Put him off. Tell him no. Abide in Christ. Everywhere you go, Jesus is doing something, you know. And he wants to do something in you and through you in places that you go, you know. And if we'll let him, he'll let us in on what he's doing in those places. There's somebody walking around at all times that needs prayer, you know. Right. Here's one of the things I've discovered and learned, and uh, it's not the easiest thing to live with, but the closer I get to Jesus, the more aware I become of, of pain and suffering around me. I really do. I become aware of it the closer I walk with Him. If I get up in the morning, and this happens to me sometimes, I get up in the morning, maybe I woke up late and I'm behind, or maybe something's going on that morning, and I don't get to just stop and get centered spiritually. Mm -hmm. You know, get out of bed, I'm in a hurry, I'm gone, you know, and I don't get to really center myself in Jesus, then then I will walk past tons of things. I'm insensitive to what's going on around me. I'm on my mission. I'm doing my stuff. And I miss stuff. But if I take time to really just center myself in Jesus, and that may only be five minutes. Right. may not be five hours. It never <laughs> is five hours for me. But if, if it's five minutes that I just talk to Jesus and just breathe a little bit and just let Him minister to me by His Spirit, the rest of that day, I, I, everywhere I go, I'm feeling things that people are going through, you know. Be sitting in a restaurant, you'll see a person, and you'll see something in them you wouldn't have seen if you were in a hurry. Uh, you'll see some pain. You'll see some struggle. And then God will just give you an opportunity many times. Or He'll tell you, make the opportunity. <laughs> right. Pray with this person. Yeah, I think that... The thing that hit me the hardest was, and I always appreciate you being vulnerable and just sharing, you know, I know you shared last week about wanting to just suck somebody in. And in that moment, kind of, I'm sorry. You didn't know it was about me, but it was, no. Um, he didn't tell you that I actually hit you, did they, man? <laughs> no, they, that's why I wasn't here last week. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That was in the hospital last week. Cause I, yeah, like I could do that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but no, it really just, Sorry. it hit, no, you're good. It, it really, no pun intended, hit me that um, <laughs> really the opportunities that I miss out on yeah. because I get so caught up in me. I get so caught up in maybe the awkwardness of a situation or the, just the obstacle that that thing may be or the unknown, like I've got a, which is a hard thing for me to step into a conversation or a moment that I don't know the details of. And so I just avoid it or I kind of steer a conversation in a different direction. Um, to me, it really hit me, like, how many opportunities have I missed out on to really be Jesus in those moments? Um, and really, as I think about when you were talking about, you know, not there's anything wrong with praying five hours. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I would also go, all. I don't really want to talk to anybody for five hours. <laughs> like, let's get up and do something, you know? Like, And I really think that's what Jesus calls us into. Oh, sure. I mean, Jesus spent all night praying before, so we can't say anything about long periods of prayer. Right. You know, I've been at, I was at, a, I've been at a few all night prayer meetings where we prayed all night. Mm -hmm. If they're really good, they're really good. But if they're not, you're sleepy and you just try to make it through. And I've been to both, you know. And uh, but Jesus had this balance between time with his Father and time out there ministering to people, and they yeah. both were critical. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, but I think for really busy families. They've, they've just got to find a bit of time if it's just get up a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. maybe go to bed a little bit earlier or something so you can get up. And I know moms and dads, it's so hard, especially little babies, their schedule is so unpredictable. Right. Sometimes I think you just need to say, take care of your kids, do the best you can, <laughs> make it through this season, right. then you'll have time to do more of this. But I think for, for just about everybody, we can carve out a few minutes, if it's mm -hmm. five or ten minutes, just to get with our Bible and get along with Jesus and Read a, read a verse or two and then just, just kind of get centered in Him yeah. and make Him the center of that moment and hopefully that day, yeah. you know, and it would help all of us. We come up, and, and I read this the other day, and uh, somebody said this. We, we're working on, uh, for the church, a discipleship program, you know, to help people become more like Christ. 
some exciting things like that that are coming. But somebody, I read this the other day, it said there's no program or no ministry that's called to disciple your kids more than your home. Yeah. The, the true discipleship of your children is going to happen at home. Yep. One of the burdens that I've had for us recently, and here we talk about it on the podcast, but uh, is just how are we helping families learn to disciple their kids at home? Mm-hmm. You know, what are, how are we equipping them? And I know we are. I know right. we're putting things in their hands, but I think that's critical for the local church. And it's um, so important for folks to just stop and abide. Yeah. The other thing that, that hit me so strong with this is the mind of Christ and abiding with Christ is always taking the position of service. Yeah. Hmm. Always. It's never about self-exaltation. Jesus had the stuff. He had the goods. He was it, you know. He could have shown everybody he was the king and he was the boss. He made himself a servant. Hmm. Knowing all that. It's almost a litmus test. Is this about me or is this about serving? <laughs> and if it's about me, maybe I'm not doing the right thing. I attended a church one time, uh, not as a member. I went to a conference there. I was there for about uh, 10 days. It was in Hawaii. I was suffering mm. for Jesus, man. Oh, Big that's time. rough. It was Pastor Wayne Cordero in, uh, I think it's New Hope Church out in Hawaii. And uh, great church. Um, and they had a thing that you could not serve in ministry in their church until you started in, in certain minutes. Essentially, before you served in ministry in their church, you took turns helping clean the bathrooms. Wow. They literally, everybody cleaned the toilets as their first ministry in the church. And I thought, how cool is that? We don't do that here. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, I thought, how cool is that? Because it really proves someone's heart. I mean, their worship team that yep. was up on stage singing, all of them at one point had clean toilets at that church. Mm. I thought, wow, that's cool. That's really cool. No, I mean, no, you know. I think all three of us around this table have cleaned out toilets at a church before, too. I, <laughs> I guarantee, uh, yeah. I guarantee <laughs> you that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm trying to change that subject. <laughs> Tell us about the time you cleaned the toilet. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, which you know, one? Which which time you want me to talk about? <laughs> um, no, I mean, you know, getting it, you know, bringing it back to that idea. You know, we we oftentimes will, you know, quote the verse where it says, you know, the Son of Man didn't come to to be served, but came to serve. And I, I just think that sometimes it's really easy for us to pass over that. Um, and when it whether it comes with, you know, what we want to do or what we want to accomplish, uh, you know, getting it back to this place of, man, I'm. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter if anybody knows my name. Doesn't matter. I mean, you, I know you kind of you went. You brought it back to the idea of reputation. You know, building a building a platform. Man, it doesn't matter if anybody knows my name. It doesn't matter if anybody. You know, I love the value of unconditional service that we have here. You know, we don't want we don't want credit. We want to continue to push push back away from that. We want Jesus to get to get the credit for that uh, for anything that happens. And uh, I, I think it. I find myself constantly trying to make sure that I'm I'm in check uh, on that. I don't want my pride uh, to get in the way. I don't want my a- desire for accolades to get in the way of continuing to do that. And it's a and it, and it comes back to hey, I've got to abide. I, I, I can't abide in Greg. I got to abide in him. Mm-hmm. To steal your line. Let's say you pull into a parking lot at the grocery store. I was at Sam's the other day. You know. And somebody had just pulled up and left their shopping cart right in a parking space. Right. There's corrals everywhere. <laughs> and they leave the parking uh, a cart right there so I can't get that spot and pull around. Right. What would Jesus do? Go back in time. Find the joker who left <laughs> the cart right. there. <laughs> and strike him. And stri- <laughs> flip a table over on him. <laughs> What do you think Jesus would actually have us do? <sighs> Slow down. Y'all are very irritated at <laughs> this question. What very, would Jesus have us do? Because I'm on a mission when I go to Sam's. I got to go get something. There's so many levels to this scenario. <laughs> There's the person that, that left a cart, couldn't walk three extra feet. Well, they're already gone, yeah, they're already so gone. you have so nothing to do with them. them. Okay. They're gone. <laughs> they're gone. Home. Okay, so I'm going to go park somewhere, and I'm going to go get the cart, and I'm going to go return it to the corral. Yeah, I've had I've done that several times, yep. and I just think the the attitude of Jesus was, uh, you know, 
do what God's called you to do in every situation. I can get mad and complain about that shopping cart being there, or I can actually help Sam's out a little bit by putting it back, or maybe not even Sam's. Uh, I can help the next person that right. needs that spot yep. by just rolling the cart back and going on about my happy day. You know? You'll see me. I love that point. Yeah, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you did. <laughs> I agree with you. But sometimes you get, yeah, you better. <laughs> I completely agree. You better. No. I, I sometimes last we, week. Really, sometimes when we talk about changing the world, and, and you know, I uh, heard a guy say this the other day, there's all kinds of people yelling about changing the global economic structure who won't even make their bed in the morning, you know, who yep. don't even clean up their own room. We talk about changing the world for Jesus, and we can't roll back a shopping cart. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just need to pick up trash. Pastor Wayne. Yep. Uh, who who I mentioned before, this is not the Wayne Cordero podcast, but he told us a story while we were out there of uh, driving through his community and somebody dumped a whole load of trash out in the road. And you've seen that too, you know, mm -hmm. seen it on Upward, we've seen it all over. Uh, people just throw trash bags out in the road. And he said people were driving through it uh, on the way to church and he got irritated at it. And he drove in church and was like, when are they going to come clean this up? And he went out, and it was still there. And he went by it two or three times, and he kept asking himself, when are they going to clean this up? And he said the Holy Spirit whispered to him and, and said, when are you going to clean it up? Hmm. And he's like, okay. Well, he, I think he had a truck, and he pulled his pickup out there. I believe he said it this way. And he just began picking that trash up, and he threw it in, uh, in the uh, truck and took it off you know, to the dump or wherever else. And uh, he told the story later that somebody was visiting the church, some some weeks later, I believe it was, and they came up to him and said, you know, we, uh, we visited here and uh, just checking out the church. They said, we saw you out in the road picking up trash, and, you know, pastoring this great church, and we saw you out there, and uh, we decided this was the church for us. Hmm. Wow. And I thought, wow. So, that's good. Well, it, it kind of brings it back to the parabola, right? The great parable of Scripture, you know, he lowered himself uh, all the way down to death on a cross, but then it was the Father who exalted him. You know, you lower yourself down and allow God to do the exalting. And let me tell you how that works out. We're sitting here looking at Upward Road right now. There was a dead raccoon right out about there. Somebody hit a raccoon and it was dead. And it laid there several days. And I'm like, who is going to come get that? Somebody should pick that thing up. This is disgusting, but it lay there in the sun and baked, and it got all swollen up and yep. awful looking. Put a disclaimer on this on this episode. <laughs> don't try this at home. I don't know what to say. But I kept looking at that raccoon, and I remembered Pastor Wayne's story. Wow. And I got a shovel, and it was one of the most disgusting things <laughs> I've ever done in my life because that thing had laid there a few days. And we took that thing and got rid of it and dumped it. Is that the smell in my office? <laughs> That's been long before you got here. I, th I don't think any of y'all were here then. No, I don't remember this. If one. this happens today, I'm going to be like, hey, Matt, go, go get, get that raccoon out of the room. I believe that as well. <laughs> you believe that could happen. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just goes to say, Jesus came to serve. Yeah. And sometimes serving just means cleaning up a mess. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. We got so many people at Upward who, if they don't come do that, job that maybe nobody else wants to do. This doesn't happen. Oh, absolutely. You know, I walk by Sunday. We're probably over time, but it's okay. That's what just feels like a Sunday <laughs> here, doesn't Man, it? I hear that often. It's okay. <laughs> right back here in the cafe, you know, they were uh, just walked by and saw ladies washing the coffee pots and doing all that stuff. And I just thought, you know, we don't do what we do without so many people who have that heart of Jesus, who yep. just come to serve. You know, yep. we don't. Uh, I get a lot of attention being up front, but man, this place doesn't happen without people truly abiding in Christ and just serving. Yep. You know, here and out in our community. Very much so. All right, I'm going to quit now. Matt's not even playing music. He normally would. I actually had the thought in my head. How he's going to start. Some music he's going right to start now. bringing a keyboard to the podcast. <laughs> Love y'all. Thanks so much for being a part of this. We'll see you next week.